Well, very warm welcome from um, our end. We are very different animals. We come from the world of education. I believe all of you have been part of this, and in fact, all of you are still learning every day. And uh, we hope to convince you that we come from the university that you all wanted to go to. It's a university without professors. It's a university of peer learning, which is pretty much what we're doing here right now. And uh, that's why Michael and Sarah and many of the folks that we know from this community all thought, yeah, that's probably a pretty good match. And um, we are here today. My name is Max Senges. I'm the CEO and Headmaster of 42 Wolfsburg and Berlin. And with me is... And I'm Pratik, uh, semi-curriculum lead slash tech lead at 42 Wolfsburg. And we tried to uh, play it also a little bit um, as a duet today, so don't be surprised. Um, we um, know what we're talking about, but we um, are not very practiced in that particular <laughs> duet. Let's put it this way. So, um, yeah, today we, we come to share about the study program that we have set up in the last well year and a half, two years. It's called uh, Software Engineering in Automotive and Mobility Ecosystems. and at, I guess at this point you see why there might be a certain um, synergy between the activities. Basically, we are trying, or we will, I should say as CEO, educate the next generation of software engineers for automotive and mobility. And um, we've chosen from the very beginning to do that with open educational resources. And that, of course, means that, um, you know, it, it's a pretty good match for open source in general, but for you it also means everything that we do in this um, collaboration you can take home and use with your clients for your own teammates to onboard and learn and innovate together. So the first part of the presentation is about that program and then we talk a bit about where we think this partnership um, could go but again um, you know this being a um, learning environment we might very well be wrong in at least uh, some aspects and we certainly forgot some aspects. So uh, we put some questions below because um, we want you to be active listeners and to think about, hmm, you know, how, what, what does that mean for me? May I become a, a fellow? May my organization become a partner in this um, particular constellation? What ideas do you have? We're going to share about a lab space that we are very happy to open to um, STV activities and um, of course we're looking for projects to get started which ones might be good more suitable than others and of course what questions and feedback do you have for us hopefully we don't need the full half hour now but we have also um, compelled Michael and Sarah to give us an hour tomorrow in that collaboration time um, and you're very, very welcome to um, use that to continue the conversation. So um, maybe before I jump directly into the program, a few more words. If um, you know, I see a couple of question marks, a university without professors, um, how does that all work? Uh, very briefly, uh, 42 is of course um, uh, based on the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy's beautiful um, analogy of asking a computer about the meaning of life and then you get 42. And so um, I personally was super attracted to that because it teaches you to ask the right question and then to find out why answers are what they are. That's a pretty good way of uh, deconstructing um, the world. It, maybe two words so you can also um, understand where I come from. Um, I studied business and computer science and then asked too many why questions and ended up with a PhD in philosophy, uh, which in the end got me first 10 years to Google and then um, into this really exciting venture. But um, I did not come up with a whole idea of 42 in that university without professors. Indeed, um, our French colleagues did. Um, about 10 years ago, they started the first 42 school in Paris. That school is now, I believe the latest number is 5,000 students strong. And uh, there's more than 40, 42 schools internationally um, together around 18,000 students. So, you know, the, the marketing says it's the biggest um, uh, software engineering education venture out there. 
but I guess we're happy to be contested and uh, see if um, we continue on that successful path. So with that out, um, a few words about what um, CME is um, the, the acronym we created for software engineering and automotive and mobility ecosystems. It's all um, open educational resources um, out in GitHub, and uh, we believe it creates an ecosystem around learning that is basically going pretty much straight from the innovations that you are doing in SDV to spread those to a wider audience and um, yeah, hopefully generate the talent that we need to keep the engine going. Um, it's hands-on projects, meaning they come from you, they come from the industry, they come from um, the research in academia, and uh, there is no instructions as such. Basically, our learning method is we ask people to solve problems and then basically give some hints what tools might be the frame for it. So there is no instruction books. It's, um, it's really problem solving in a, um, specific, in a specified um, set. And um, yeah, in that particular case, we um, have designed CME to not as a complete beginner's um, course, but for people who have um, undergone the 42 core curriculum, which uh, takes about a year and a half. And, uh, and so we don't expect the students to come blank, but to have fairly decent programming experience or uh, experience from industry that would allow them to onboard in a quick matter. Um, to be very precise, and I know this audience loves precision, um, we have a 42 specialization that we call 42 mobility that is set up for those who have undergone the 42 track so far. And CME is actually open to everybody, and we're going to have the first implementation in this July. It's a, the exciting moment when you're hoping that more and more applications are coming in. So uh, if um, you know people who uh, this might be appropriate for, I believe in your case, you're more fellow candidates, but if you know people who might be interested in that master level education, please point them our way. Now, last point on this, just to start to get you into the um, yeah, mode of, of grasping what it is, um, what you see there are pie racers. So um, again, we're looking to offer very concrete learning objects rather than have people learn theory. They're actually unpacking something and getting ready to um, code from day one. Next slide. This is yep. when I pass it over to um, the deeper voice. I think you are um, a sonor, maybe? Uh, yeah, I will take that. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is um, the structure of CME. And uh, as Max explained, the concept of 42 and where the CME follows uh, uh, the same concept, it's peer-to-peer -peer learning. It means we do not uh, have professors or teachers who could conduct theory lectures and uh, educate our students. But what we do instead is um, give them challenge, give them problems and uh, with the healthy environment, the learning environment, they are uh, um, encouraged to sell, solve those problems by the help of their peers and by uh, self-learning. And uh, our key um, is the learning object itself, as Max explained. Uh, we learned that students learn faster if they have something handy uh, to try their solution on. And that's why we start with a one to 10 scale RC as a prototyping uh, device. And they try to learn different technologies of automotive software engineering and mobility software engineering. So uh, of course, uh, it's a huge umbrella. There are so many projects. Uh, there are so many technologies that a student needs to be aware of. But we are starting uh, with with very basic. And what you see here is the structure which spans over 12 months. And we we initially on the phase one we we are introducing three core modules. And as you see, 
Uh, DES is distributed embedded systems is one of the module in um, a CME program where uh, the focus is to educate uh, students or participants in, in um, learning what ECU is and how uh, the software and uh, everything works in the car, right? So starting from um, operating systems to in vehicle communications, all uh, related technologies gets covered into DES. Uh, then the second module is ADS, autonomous driving systems, where we introduce different concepts related to autonomous driving and AI, machine learning, perception, you know, all, all those topics. Uh, and the projects gets introduced into, um, into um, ADS modules and the third module is a uh, mobility ecosystem where um, we introduce concepts or ideas which are not quite within the car but of course which is outside the car which makes car smart so to say so the projects like uh, uh, fleet management system and um, smart charging infrastructure smart traffic light infrastructure and um, uh, theme project airport experience so these are the projects where students are introduced uh, uh, to the outside world of the car the technologies which are supporting car but from outside so yes. if i just may um, explain one aspect so the the three modules together are um, planned to take about one year if you're fast and you do it full time now um, you probably all know the 10,000 hours before mastery, etc. So we don't expect people to go in there and be um, full experts in all the areas, which uh, would be um, just too much, right? But um, we, what we do think is it gives you a good overview of the different tool chains of what is important and understand where in those areas your individual um, interest and drive and passion lies so for example in three months autonomous driving um you know you're not going to go super deep in the machine learning in the the depth and the theory that's not what it is about but at least afterwards you can have a conversation with a colleague that is doing exactly that right and there is interaction possible and collaboration and learning so um i, I think that's important and um while this is the heart of um Kind of from a pedagogical point of view where we see the, the backbone maybe not the heart the backbone of the education where it becomes really interesting is in the interaction with fellows from industry and academia people like you we already have um pratik correct me around 30 maybe that um have volunteered to do so and the idea is they want to connect with those young talents some of them might be enticed by their HR companies or by the need um, to uh, find talent for their own teams, right? And so there is a mentoring, a learning together and pursuing projects and working on projects like your STV projects, right? Where you're um, uh, winning those uh, folks to think, to um, uh, contribute, to be onboarded too. So this is all extracurricular and um, of course, offering internships, offering jobs is in the end what um, uh, comes up as the next step. Yeah, exactly. So we are not promising that we will make pros out of students, but at least uh, our, our um, objective is to make them familiar, make them aware of the technology. And this is one of the area where a freshly graduate uh, student and where the current automotive industry is there is a gap of, of uh, learning technology and uh, of course if we want to uh, create an STV or the next generation of uh, software defined vehicle and the overall ecosystem we need um, resources who uh, who can catch up faster because uh, the technology is moving so fast and um, um, the learning is not so fast and this is this is one of the area where we are trying to bridge the gap and uh, if if I can explain a little bit about the um, uh, horizontal structure, of course, uh, we cannot uh, introduce a high level project to the students who doesn't uh, know the core concept of vehicle. That's why uh, we are trying to make the distributed embedded system, at least the two projects, 
let's say one project, a compulsory one, where they understand what um, uh, the structure looks like, how the the distributed uh, computing happen, uh, happens in, in the car and how the technology is uh, used. And keeping that in mind, they decide where they want to dive into. So of course, uh, it's impossible to do all the projects in 12 months, and we are not expecting students to do that. Uh, that's why it's important for them to realize, OK, if you want to master uh, autonomous driving and there is a huge curiosity among the students to learn how the car drives itself, then they might choose uh, uh, one or two project in autonomous driving systems. But here we are trying to specify the path. OK, you want to learn um, uh, how a self-driving mail uh, cart can work, then this is the ideal path to follow. And that's why uh, it's important to introduce the core concept as 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 the base and then introduce the advanced concept on top of that, leaving them, of course, giving them 100 percent freedom to choose the underlying technology. Of course, this is the very important factor that we don't tell students to use uh, specific programming language or specific technologies to solve the problem. It's their job. It's their it's their exercise to do to come up with the best um, uh, technology to solve a particular problem. Uh, to cover it, uh, the last point, uh, of course, uh, we are OER and uh, we are trying to make the best use of GitHub. And um, I, I truly believe that it's uh, the development is 30 percent uh, innovation and 70% processes. So it's important to train students uh, to follow the industry standard, the processes, uh, the agile way of work. And this is where we are trying to uh, put them into, into agile practices through GitHub. And GitHub has projects and issues. Those are those kind of features. And uh, fully exposed to um, uh, all those agile way of work, sprint planning, uh, sprint review, and uh, all the factors reviewing and, and the fun uh, part of, of the development. So that's where uh, GitHub comes into play as a learning management system. And um, um, this is where we also invite fellows and it's easy for students to get in touch with fellows on GitHub because, uh, you know, the, the community is uh, active contributing code on GitHub and on GitLab. So um, Max, this is. Yeah, more than happy to um, to take this one. So um, the idea is that um, uh, the learning space in around CME somewhat um, uh, overlapping, merging with uh, the learning space around SDV is a community of practice, right? It brings together um, uh, those who are um, discussing the um, new upcoming questions, um, uh, who are helping each other out, uh, pointing each, uh, pointing to resources, etc. So um, we are happy to host, similar to what this is, um, knowledge sharing sessions, networking between the the experts, um, uh, and of course. That also means in the end co-creating these projects that um, we are talking about. Basically, I, I guess in a way, Pratik, what we could say is if you have an STV project and uh, you think it would be good to start um, onboarding students, learners onto it, we can work with you to, to make that happen. And uh, in the end, of course, that accumulates to um, open innovation as innovation is in the end joint learning in uncharted um, territory. And um, yeah, I mentioned before, mentoring um, the students is something that we also put into a bit more formal structure. So, um, you know, they would actually come up and uh, agree with you on mentoring goals. It's just quite helpful, as uh, Pratik said, to have that kind of structure in it. Uh, the commitment doesn't have to be huge. Of course, we'd love uh, for you to spend more time than that, but um, the um, uh, pedagogical um, thought leader that we like is Mitch Resnick from the MIT Media Lab, and he says, probably also true for open source projects, right? Having a really low barrier to entry, low floors, high ceilings, you're welcome to spend more than eight hours a week with us if uh, you can. 
Think about it maybe a little bit like a Google 20% project. If you remember those, um, the, the engineers were allowed to spend 20% one day per week on whatever they wanted. And that's how we feel this um, engagement with 42 could work. Next slide. So um, these are all companies that you're probably familiar with. Many of them um, are already active on SDV and Eclipse here um, as well. And that's uh, actually how we first learned about you. Uh, so um, you'd be in very good company. Again, also the um, engagement from the companies is um, you know, starts fairly easy by just contributing through individual fellows, goes to um, funding some scholarships so students who can't afford studying with us otherwise can do so. By the way, uh, studying at 42 is completely tuition free, but of course the students, if it's a full-time um, student engagement, you need to still provide for your living and food, etc. So that's what the scholarships are for. And uh, Volkswagen, for example, was so, so kind to really give us the whole base funding, 10 million, for uh, each school for five years, but Microsoft is uh, very generous supporting us. Um, so does um, do all the other ones. So it really ranges in um, how the engagement of the organizations is organized. In terms of fellows, uh, of course, no one is expert in everything and we, we are um, inviting all, all all the talent or all the experts to to contribute in in the oer and uh, the names that that you see here of course those are a few of many and uh, since we started with three modules with very basic uh, support so these are the people who helped me helped us uh, form uh, uh, the content, the project content to put in place. OK, this could be a real challenge for students and by solving this challenge, they can learn about uh, different parts or different technologies in the vehicle. So in embedded system, Torsten, Oliver and uh, uh, Volker are the key people who helped um, uh, in putting in place five projects of embedded systems, which uh, uh, teaches to supposed to teach students in uh, um, um, distributed embedded system and distributed computing, uh, including the starting from building the operating system, uh, uh, embedded uh, operating system for uh, cars, and to uh, have a successful interprocess communication between processes different kind of application instrument cluster and head unit all those things the second uh, in the second module we have silvio sasha uh, guido and david who are the key people to form four projects of uh, uh, ads autonomous driving system of course as max said it's impossible to uh, teach uh, students uh, everything about um, autonomy in in three months but uh, we started with four projects which introduces the concept of autonomous driving systems and these are uh, the four uh, important uh, experts uh, who helped me uh, form those four projects and last uh, mobility ecosystem um, uh, which covers uh, as the technology which is outside uh, the car. Of course, we have uh, Mario uh, with us who helped form airport experience project. Uh, the idea of mobility ecosystem, as I explained, is not to restrict students or um, um, participants to focus in just into automotive or just into car, but uh, trying to expose them towards overall mobility uh, where, where the mobility is people oriented, people centric and not just um, uh, car centric. So to say, so Mario, Fabian and Yannick brought up uh, very interesting projects uh, in, in uh, smart charging infrastructure, airport experience and, and uh, fleet management system to introduce uh, mass mobility as a service kind of uh, concepts to the students and other um, hacking related uh, topics uh, in that uh, fashion. So a little bit about this slide. Uh, of course, why we are doing it, it's clear. We want to fill the gap, uh, which is there from uh, university graduate or master level graduate to what current industry or the future car industry needs. And uh, uh, the biggest benefit for the students is, of course, to uh, to catch up with the skills and to find jobs, to 
find the internship. And the most important is to um, um, improve the networking. I mean, it's really, really the key. Uh, when I graduated, for example, I did not study about uh, embedded systems um, uh, in, in my college days of computer science of engineering, um, uh, how the in-vehicle communication can network works. I did not study that. Well, how I learned it is by working with my peers in my experience. So this is the way a uh, student needs to be exposed to the open source community like, like yourself and uh, where everyone is contributing into specific technology and they need to understand that where is the gap where they can contribute into into um, uh, an SDV for for example so it's really important for them to um, um, uh, get exposed to the open source and very large community as as a student as a practice uh, practitioner of uh, open source uh, code contributing and yeah further I will pass it to you yeah, as you can tell, repetition doesn't spoil the prayer, but um, uh, those who have been um, uh, following us will see that um, uh, we're repeating kind of the same um, uh, attractors, hopefully. So I'd suggest we go to the next slide. Um, uh, so there, there is uh, a little space left. This is us. We also have uh, Tim with us, our program manager, who uh, you'll be interacting with a lot if you start to work with us, um, also co-organizing the workshop tomorrow. And um, there is uh, more good folks that um, you'll get in touch with. Next slide. And this is the lab that we are dreaming of. We don't have it fully signed off yet, but uh, by the 3rd of July, there will be a lab. If it's that cool, we will see. Will we get there eventually? I'm very optimistic. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, as you can see, it's it's like a miniature and thanks to our fellow Torsten to uh, to come up with this uh, very um, uh, nicely looking uh, miniature lab. So the idea is, of course, to have uh, uh, one ecosystem for our students. Uh, so far, it's under the roof studies, OK, uh, where students are encouraged to work with real real cars starting from one to ten scale and gradually, um, you know, moving forward uh, with with a real size car. And this can happen only in the lab. Uh, they cannot study while sitting in, in their home uh, uh, and doing remote study. No, if we want to engage them or if we want to expose them to the community, they have to bring themselves under one roof, uh, work with the other students and the fellows in, in terms of experts to uh, to learn uh, in, a, in a fast manner. And, and I, I have a very good example from the semi pilot program that we just finished. Uh, I'll talk about it later. So uh, as you can see, one tiny part on the ground floor where uh, the test track is designed and I, I know the concept is not new where you can test a uh, different solution on one to ten scale car on one to ten scale miniature city and the roads and bridges how the different scenarios could look like could be a fun way for students to um, intuitively learn new things and then uh, there uh, post potentially there is uh, an R&D facility where we are trying not to limit our students to just for one to ten scale car, but we are trying to improve the learning object one to five scale go kart size car where they can fit various sensors on it and learn uh, different aspect, aspects of uh, automotive software engineering. And why not to go to one to two scale car and uh, the real car? Of course, that's a possibility. Tech area with 30 workstations. So we give students um, um, all the electronics they need. Uh, as Max mentioned, it's free of cost studies for the students. On our side, we provide them with uh, uh, with a work machine and with all the pyracers, electronics, sensor, sensory system, whatever they need to to work on those projects. We uh, provide them in um, in the tech area. And uh, just to share, um, uh, in the 42 world, um, uh, we calcu calculate um, one machine can be used by uh, three students because we're open 24 seven. So uh, do the math, right? If they're there all the time. So um, the 30 workstations would get you to 90 students. Um, truth is, of course, many uh, folks do a lot of stuff at home and don't spend eight hours a day um, in the office with a computer. But um, I just wanted to point that bit out to give you an idea that it does scale nicely already uh, with the physical setups. But of course, 
the peer learning approach, I think that the beauty of it, because you take out the uh, rare resource of the trainer, it really scales um, enormously well. And that's uh, what we have been seeing in the network so far. Yeah, um, adding on that outdoor mobility space and social gathering, uh, we would uh, see uh, Eclipse Foundation SDV group uh, hosting one of their events uh, if if we uh, fruitify this concept and of course inventory room to manage all the things. So this is what uh, we imagine uh, our uh, CME lab uh, could look like. Over to you. So this is uh, really just a tidy view. Um, uh, Sarah and Michael, I think, have both mentioned uh, that LG has joined uh, Eclipse SDV. We were super happy to hear that because we have been approached by Korean colleagues. The Kukmin University is one of the most traditional places there to study automotive more um, around me uh, mechanics and engine mechanical engineering, mechatronics, etc. And they were excited to add that software component. So. Uh, um, where uh, they have been with us a couple of times. We had a test run with their students in Wolfsburg for half a year. And um, uh, now in July, the first 10 students will come to study CME with us for a year. And we will go there to start spread um, our open educational resource over there. So um, if you know educational resources, have uh, friends that are professors, um, uh, we're more than happy to uh, to grow the community also in that direction. Next slide. Uh, just a point to <laughs> add, please. Uh, example of the pilot program and example of a student. Uh, uh, we we hosted four students from uh, Korea, three from KMU and one one from uh, 42 Korea. And uh, three students who joined us uh, to pilot test the program, they were uh, basically from uh, mechanical engineering and um, background. So they had very limited knowledge in the coding itself. Uh, and the pilot program was designed uh, to uh, span for six months. And within five months, from very basic coding knowledge, at the end of five months, they were able to create uh, embedded Linux image using Yocto. So you can imagine the potential of um, the curriculum that it, it exponentially um, um, uh, increases the learning path for, for our students. So in five months from almost basic coding knowledge to learning about how instrument cluster works, how IPC works and how um, um, the operating system is created. Uh, yeah, that's that's something that we are proud of. Pratik, we're standing between people and their well-deserved coffee. So um, uh, we are going to wrap it up briefly. That um, uh, part was just to explain that um, thanks to uh, the, the great Eclipse team, we had announced our partnership, but you know, announcing is easy, um, making it work and providing the value to um, all parties is where um, we need you. We are here to, to um, you know, make it happen. So please approach us. Um, and uh, and get in touch. Um, we hope that there was some um, reason to what we have been sharing and um, let's take it from there. Next slide. Um, I don't know if you recognize this animal, the Germans amongst you will. Uh, we call it a Eierlegende Wollmilchsau, so an animal that gives you um, milk, eggs and wool. Of course, that is how we would love to um, be perceived in um, this ecosystem, right? We um, we can be many things. We can be what. Um, hopefully, we can also be what you want us to be. What this, um, uh, yeah, partnership can be just a, a repetition. It can start really easy, one two hours per month, meeting with a young talent, developing um, uh, those relationships. But really, it's an entrepreneurial setup where we want to explore opportunities together and you've seen the fellow activities before. So last slide, I believe is ah, it's it's last slide <laughs> is um, that we have been starting to look into Leda and Velocitas um, as potentially really nice um, uh, pilot projects, but to be challenged or to be disagreed with um, Gabriela. And um, uh, of course we um, uh, do see that Archie and Sommer are um, uh, potentially good as well, even though not as good. Pratik, you have the last word on that. Yeah, that is. Uh, <laughs> the, the, 
Tom is not here, so. <laughs> <laughs> True. So of course, uh, lots lots of potential. Uh, we you are coming up with a uh, lot many projects, new projects, and I totally believe that that that's a huge potential where you can introduce the learning factor of the projects to make uh, the students be part of your uh, project and help you to contribute into uh, uh, the projects of STV. That would be the the key uh, idea behind this. Yeah. So this is it. I hope you like the animal we brought and um, uh, that um, uh, many of you are inspired to get in touch and learn more. I'm sure there's still questions. Some of them we might be able to answer. Many we will have to answer together, but we'd love to do so tomorrow, two to three. Um, uh, if you don't find us now or during cocktails, during dinner, um, we'll be around. We're here to stay. Um, thanks for welcoming us. <laughs>